The movie begins in war-weary Russia in the spring of 1917. It was right after the February Revolution when the monarchy was overthrown by a provisional government. A military officer named Nikolai just arrived at the great city of St. Petersburg from the front lines after being reassigned. He rides a horse carriage and tells the coachman to bring him somewhere. While on the way, the coachman informs him of the current chaotic situation of the capital. Meanwhile, a singer named, Nadia, is practicing with her mother when suddenly, Froska, their maidservant, runs over and excitedly hands her the letter. Nadia eagerly opens it, and a blue medallion falls off. She reads its contents in silent and instantaneously. News of Nadia's fiancé, Petya, was killed in action. Moments later, Vera, Nadia's good friend, makes her entrance. After hearing news of Petya, Vera tells everybody present in the room that she'll be joining the newly formed Bochkavira Women's Battalion then leaves as suddenly as she came. Nadia wanting revenge tells her mother that she'll do the same and runs off after Vera. Surprised and afraid by her daughter's decision, the matriarch offers Frasca jewelry and cash to bring Nadia back. At the same time, Nikolai arrives at the Russian army's headquarters, where the generals, including the man in charge, Kerensky, plan to hold out the Germans' advance. One of the generals tells the committee that none of the soldiers are combat ready then proceeds to show a video that many of the regiments in the front lines are refusing to fight. Soldiers fraternize with the enemy as the Germans encourage them to revolt while offering alcohol and food rations. Kerensky had enough in order to stop playing the video. Some members of the deciding committee agreed that the death penalty should be returned, but Kerensky presents a risky alternative, a crazy propaganda ploy. He tells the council that he created the Bochkavira battalion to increase morale and encourage everyone to fight. Soon, the conscription begins. Ladies from all cultures, backgrounds, and socioeconomic class lines up for enlistment and medical exams. One of the applicants, Ivdokia, surprises her lover, Alexei, by enlisting. Afraid for his loved one, Alexei tries to disqualify her, but she insists. Later, another applicant named, Dusia was denied by Nikolai since she was too fat. In an effort to impress everybody so that she can enlist, Dusia bends a steel fire poker with her bare hands. Unbeknownst to her, the battalion commander, Maria Bochkareva, was behind her. Maria appoints Dusia as her deputy and orders her to proceed with the enlistment. Afterward, Maria greets a general outside the building. The general explains that with no son, he offers his daughter, Natalia Tadischeva, to join the regiment. Without question, Maria welcomes the bright young lady. Before the official training starts, the lady's hair is to be cut short. Some of the applicants couldn't bear the thought of their crowning glory being cut off and quits. But to many of the dedicated, they steal themselves and proceed with the haircut. After the mass haircut, the recruits are taught to stay in proper formation while their commander, Maria, addresses them. Galina, another recruit, starts a commotion at the barracks by being a bully. When Galina tries to hit Evdokia, Natalia stops her. Vera asks Dusia to keep things in order, but the large lady sides with Galina after being offered the best bed spot. Dusia tries to abuse her power, but little does she know, Maria is behind them. After hearing everything, Maria agrees to let them exchange beds but transfers the deputy position to Natalia. The women got their first taste of training early the next day. They jogged for kilometers until they reached a downhill. At first, they hesitated to budge, but with not much option, they proceeded to move. On the way down, many lose their balance and stumble. Later, they arrive at the beach to finish multiple obstacle courses. They were also taught how to fire a gun, the indications of a gas attack, and awaken their inner violence. Maria instructed Galina and Natalia to step forward then ordered Galina to hit each other. Natalia hesitated initially, but she hit Galina back after receiving a few blows. Maria then orders everybody to beat each other, resulting in an all-out brawl. One day, a recruit with a good sense of smell tells her comrades that they'll have beef for lunch, and she was right. While eating, Galina asks to speak with the commander in private. Curious about what she has to say, Maria agrees and leads her to the side. Galina shouts for everyone to hear that Evdokia escapes every night to meet with the boys. Disappointed for snitching on an ally, Maria punches Galina in the face and orders her to leave. On another occasion, Nadia's mother talks with Maria in hopes of getting her daughter out of military training. She hands the commander a letter and informs her that Nadia's a singer and was given the opportunity to travel and perform abroad. She also spills that she paid Frasca to take care of Nadia. Later Nadia and Frasca were called into the commander's office. After spilling the beans, Frasca bolts out of the door ashamed. On the other hand, 
Natalia tears up the invitation letter and tells her mother that she'll be staying to surf. On the way out, Frosca returns the jewelry used as payment since she genuinely wanted to serve alongside Nadia. She also returned the blue medallion to Nadia. Afterward, a truck arrives, and the officer tells Maria that she is under arrest but doesn't disclose on what grounds. Nikoli, Alexei, and the recruits could only watch as they saw their commander taken away. Later, the general informs Maria that she's under arrest for hitting a subordinate. In the background, Galina, along with a few officers, reported the incident and would like to settle things by creating a military committee spearheaded by Galina. Maria reacted by spitting on her hand and gesturing at the complainants. The general decides to dissolve the battalion in anger, stripping Maria of her rank and imprisoning her. Soon, the Bochkareva battalion marches outside the headquarters. As Maria's deputy, Natalia forces her way into the general's office and tries to persuade the general to release their commanding officer, Maria. She explains that everybody in the battalion is part of the committee, hence, there's no need for one, and Maria should be released. After being dismissed by the general, Natalia returns to the formation and waits for a result. Dedicated for their CO to be released, they stayed in formation throughout the night, even after the general went home. When the general went back to the headquarters in the morning, he saw the ladies still in formation. Amazed by their loyalty and persistence, he decides to take back Maria's punishment. Later that night, it was known that Natalia was pregnant. Maria orders the whole battalion to line up so that she can ceremonially transfer the responsibility as deputy to Vera and send Natalia home. The following day, at the obstacle course, Maria, along with the general, briefs the regiment that they will be tested and that if one fails, everybody fails. They've been preparing for months for this moment, and everybody does their best in passing every obstacle. But trouble came when Nadia shorts a jump on a ledge causing her to fall and break her ankles. Vera and Frost didn't leave Nadia and assisted her throughout the whole course. In the end, they were late, which made Maria very disappointed. On the other hand, the general appreciated the fact that they didn't leave a comrade behind. He declares that the whole battalion passes and that they will be part of the regular army. Soon, the battalion was headed for the front lines. Nadia sees her fiancé, Petya, injured and unconscious at the train station. She leaves the blue medallion and catches the train. Moments later, while on a break from the march, men from a different regiment run up to see the all-female battalion and maybe get some peace. Quick on her wits, Maria orders everyone to get in a defensive formation. Maria then confronts the men aggressively. Fortunately, a few soldiers recognized Maria as a comrade for saving their lives years back. That made the male soldiers respect them and leave. Almost at the front lines, Maria meets up with a dispirited colonel. He admitted that he couldn't control his men, who all lost the will to fight. After arriving at the trenches, the soldiers settle in and account for their positions and guns. It wasn't too long before two German soldiers came to bribe them with food and alcohol. But the lady soldiers were loyal to their cause, they held them at gunpoint, and when they fought back, they killed one and captured the other. Evdokia and another soldier were assigned to escort the German prisoner. The other soldier fell as they crossed a trench, hence, Evdokia was left alone to escort the prisoner. She underestimated the German who acted to be friendly, and when the opportunity arose at the forest, he managed to choke Evdokia to death. Evdokia was the first casualty of the Bochkareva crew, and everyone mourned her death, especially her lover, Alexei. A month later, the Germans bombarded the Russian trenches with mustard gas. The ladies spring into action by wearing gas masks and covering their positions. Frosca hands out the gas mask and forgets to leave one for herself in the heat of the moment. Not a few minutes later, Frosca suffocates and dies. Maria orders her troops to attack, and the two armies meet in the middle at close quarter combat. Many Russians died in the skirmish, but they managed to overwhelm the Germans and have them retreat. Following the encounter, Maria requests help from the colonel but is denied stating that his troops are criminals and traitors who won't listen to his command. She can see how ashamed he is with this from the colonel's face, and she lets it go. On the way back to the front lines, the male soldiers confront her for causing all the trouble for them. They presented Maria with her husband, who, after a brief exchange, beats her to a pulp. She tries to fight back, but man's strength makes a considerable difference. The colonel hears the commotion outside but chooses to fall on deaf ears. Later, Maria strugglingly recovers and returns to her girls. Back at HQ, the higher-ups review the videos taken from the front lines. A Russian colonel named Leonidovich discusses that it's evident that no soldier's regiment wants to take action except for the Bochkareva battalion. 
Meanwhile, Petya causes a commotion by accidentally dropping the tea he was about to serve when he saw his fiancé in the video. After the meeting, Petya asks Leonidovich for permission to go to the front lines, to which Leonidovich replies that he too will be going. At the front lines, the ladies hold a prayer ceremony knowing for a complete fact that tonight, with no one to help them with the advance, the majority of them will not see the next day. Each soldier holds a candle and offers prayers. The Russians crawl towards the German positions in the cover of darkness. Maria orders Vera to take the lead of the charge once she gives the signal. And not too long, Maria lights up dried hay signaling the attack. The Russian troops charge the unsuspecting Germans. The enemy springs into action and manages to get several kills, but the Russians have the upper hand by using the element of surprise. The colonel near the front lines awakens to the sound of a gunfight. He asks his aide what the commotion is all about, and the aide informs the officer that the Bochkareva has gone through with the attack since midnight. Fierce close-quarter combat in the trenches ensues. Both sides have suffered heavy casualties, but the Russians manage to push back the Germans to their initial positions. Dusia picks up a machine gun during the fray and goes on full Rambo mode on the enemies. She scores many Germans and manages to give way for her allies. On the other side, Alexei leads a charge but gets hit in the neck, killing him instantly. After the carnage, the troops lined up as Maria rewarded Dusia her personal watch for her bravery and contribution in the advance. They were fairly happy with what they carried off, it was no mere success that even their counterparts in the Russian army couldn't do. Maria commands her deputy and Nadia to ask for help from the male troops once more, but not a soul volunteered. Colonel Leonidovich and Petya later arrived to volunteer to fight in the front lines. The male soldiers held them at gunpoint to stop them by stating that officers don't take part in combat. And so, Leonidovich, along with the other officers, strips their epaulette, as Maria feared, the Germans counterattacks to take the position back. Another fierce firefight ensues. While operating the machine gun, Nikolai dies, and when Vera tries to take over, she gets hit and dies. The ladies are pushed back into a dead end, and the Germans surround them. They say their last prayers with no escape and little to no other alternative. The movie ends with the brave Bochkareva members' prayers being answered. They hear a large number of footsteps heading for their position. It turns out that the officers lead the charge by example, and the male troops who were lazing by, have a change of hearts and joins to reinforce the ladies. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.